Good morning. Um, thank you so much, Sharon, for that um, introduction. Uh, it's an honor and privilege uh, to have gotten this opportunity to come uh, before you this morning to come and talk to you about FEM and what we do as a business. And um, as Sharon indicated earlier, before I start with the presentation, I just want to emphasize that if there are any questions, um, please leave them in the chat box and, and we will manage those amongst ourselves. If there's anything that I cannot answer today, we will note those um, and we'll definitely make sure that we come back to you with an answer. Okay, great. So let me start shortly without wasting any time. So in today's presentation, this is an outline of what I'll be taking you through. We'll have a look at uh, who FEM is, the benefits of joining FEM, and the health and safety programs that we run, reporting occupational acquired COVID in the workplace, and things that we do through our education foundation. FEM provides insurance cover to construction companies and their employees against injuries or illnesses contracted in the workplace. We are the only company outside of the compensation fund that provides this type of cover to the construction industry and we've got a proud history of over 80 years of actually providing this type of service. I've got an accident in 2010. Both of the legs were were broken and my doctor said no the only option we've got now is to amputate your leg. I was scared of is that the medical is going to run out after that you have to see your to finish so FEME helped me a lot about financial and medical. From the date my husband passed on they helped me by giving me allowance for me and for my kids so that we can have a better life. And until my kids complete their studies, each and every month, FEM is there for me. FEM's philosophy on service is centered on two things. We want to be passionate and compassionate about what we do. We appreciate the fact that when an employee is injured, we need to be ensuring that they're receiving their benefits and they're getting their medical bills paid so that they can focus on getting better and getting back into the workplace. I have been seeing patients for FEM and I've been writing prognostic reports on patients for FEM over the last 15 years. The moment you're injured on duty, the moment an impairment assessment has to be done, the moment someone sits with a permanent impairment, FEM jumps in even for families after the patient is deceased. In as much as we focus on providing insurance, we've also got a strong focus on actually uh, preventing injuries and illnesses in the workplace to start off with. FEM has a phenomenal rebate system. The less injuries, the more the rewards, which has been well received by the construction industry because we've got funds coming back in to the contractors' companies, and as a result, again, we can put the finances back into the promotion of a better and safe working environment. We do believe that uh, you know, we need to play an important role in terms of developing the communities in which we operate. In particular, we have set up the FEM Education Foundation, where we've set aside 750 million rand to focus on the development of education and leadership uh, within South Africa. FEM is a very professional, very efficiently working insurer. They are the true champions in the construction industry when it comes to health and safety. FEM is caring. When I needed financial help and medical help, FEM was there for me. We are proactive, we are involved or interactive, and we also go an extra mile. At FEM, we are more than just about providing insurance. We care. Great. So that's just a brief uh, video that, that uh, introduces who we are and some of the things that we do as a business and for the industry. 
So when we start looking at workmen's compensation, so what is this? Um, it's a compulsory assurance that's taken to cover employees who get injured in the likely event of, of getting injured or disabled whilst on duty. So the aim of the COID Act is to provide for compensation to employees, their dependents, in the case of death or, or being disabled or injured whilst at work. Um, so FEM is one of the two private sector companies that have been issued a license to provide this kind of insurance in, in the industry. And this license is issued to us by the Minister of Labor. So employers have an option um, to choose between insuring with um, the compensation fund, so through the government, or insuring with FEM. The rates that are used to determine the premium that's paid is provided by the minister. So as, as FEM, even though we are a private uh, corporate company, we cannot go and determine the premium ourselves. It is instructed to us by the Minister of Labor. So the benefits that are payable under COIDA um, include the fact that we reimburse the income at a rate of 75% as per COIDA Act. We are, you, you, employees receive unlimited medical cover, but of course this is subject to COIDA tariffs for asset claims in line with the injuries that they um, um, occurred at work. Pensions are paid out for more serious injuries by COIDA, either as a lump sum or a monthly pension. Pensions are paid out to spouse or spouses and their children in the event that the employee has passed away. But of course, this is up to certain maximums. Again, these are predetermined um, under COIDA. The funeral benefit paid by FEM in the event of death of an employee ensures that the employees get a very dignified burial. Then if you start looking at the FEM specific membership benefits, so our members specifically enjoy access to private healthcare for injured employees. Uh, we have a group of what we call MSOs, and these are a group of qualified professional nurses, and they monitor the treatment that's given to our, our injured employees, and they ensure that the treatment is in line with the injury. So this also eliminates over-servicing, which we know that is something that happens um, quite a lot in our industry. The administration is done by FEM, and this includes requesting all the reports until the claim is finalized. Um, there's access to online submission of claims, um, and this obviously helps with the speeding up of the claims process. Accident statistics are available on our website, so all our members have access to stats uh, which they can include when they share with their members, with their employees, or in any other industry presentations. Um, road accident claims uh, for motor vehicle accidents uh, are also managed by FEM if you are a member. We provide on-site training for claims and underwriting training at FEM offices around the country. And then lastly, we have a facility for an online return of earnings uh, process. Then when you look at specifically merit rebates and loadings, which is another benefit um, that FEM provides to members. So if the accident record of an employer during a particular period is favorable, FEM may give the employer a rebate. Um, and so these merit rebates are paid out each year, um, but of course, this is at the discretion of FEM and the board. And this is in line with the accident stats um, that the employer has managed to, to ensure the whole year. Um, and then when we start looking at recording, uh, at loading, so this is the opposite of a merit rebate. So if the accident records are not favorable, we then apply what we call a loading, meaning that we increase um, and the premium based on the fact that your records have not been favorable in the, uh, in the period of assessment. All right, then are we gonna look at our health and safety programs that we run as a business? So we've got something that we call safe timber. And um, in line with how important health and safety is to us as a business, uh, we've got safe timber, which is an event that happens annually during September um, 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 as a business. And the objective of safe timber 
is to draw awareness around the key uh, causes of accidents in our industry. So we go out and we invite different stakeholders in the construction industry. We share stats around what causes the different accidents and also ways in which these can be prevented. Um, because of COVID, we've been hosting these virtually and we've been inviting very key experts in, in, in the construction space who have also been educating and sharing very um, insightful knowledge around keeping our industry safe. So for us, it's important because we firmly believe that every accident is preventable and that an industry with zero accidents is achievable. Um, and then another initiative is that we've got industry associations uh, that we've partnered with. So because we're driven to make the construction industry a safer environment to work in, again, we believe that an industry with zero fertilities is possible. So we partner with different construction um, or industry associations and we offer the following to our partners. We offer uh, uh, sponsoring golf days, presentations and activities. We co-brand for exhibitions. We attend meetings uh, where we provide and interpret accident statistics to the, to the attendees. Um, we refer organizational services to policyholders who require them. We offer or we give access to training on the move, which is something that I'll also speak to a bit later. And we offer them a very strong affiliation with the APM brand. And these are just some of the associations that we've partnered with. Um, and then in addition to that, we've got an annual health and safety awards evening that we host. Um, so as I've said, it's an annual awards evening. Um, and we do this to encourage our members to maintain low accident stats. So we take very careful consideration um, around the categories and the criteria in which we present our awards. So once the categories are established, employers in each category are ranked based on accident frequency and loss ratio. Again, this is very much dependent on the accident frequency in your business and the loss ratio that's experienced in your business. Um, so the accident frequency is the number of employees that are injured per 100 employees, or the percentage of employees that are injured, whilst the loss ratio is the value of claims that are a percentage of the premiums that the business pays. Um, then, of course, the, when there's an occurrence of a single fatal accident in that business, they are automatically disqualified for obvious reasons. We cannot be encouraging losing lives in the workplace. Um, and then we, we offer financial rewards or awards to people that qualify in the different categories. And we host a very elegant and, and, and very uh, luxurious event uh, where we, we award the awardees. Um, then we've got something that's called training on the move, and it's something that we, uh, we do with one of uh, the NBAs. And I've shared the information um, that can be accessed if, if anyone is interested in getting more information or booking uh, this facility. So training on the move is a vehicle um, that goes around and travels in, in, in quite a lot of different provinces, including Gauteng, Mpumalanga, Northwest, and Limpopo, where they travel around and, and, and um, bringing the training facility on the move, as, as it's stated by the, the, the name of the vehicle. So they go around training on health and safety awareness, um, and then the vehicle is fitted with um, a DVD and a TV, and of course, some branding elements from FEM. Um, so this is offered to, to NBA North members, FEM, all FEM policyholders and contractors. Um, and this facility, as I pointed out, is used to really point out and, and train members on the key things around health and safety. So it's a great facility. And I would encourage um, our members to reach out and try and, and get access to this. Okay, and then moving on to something that's quite topical in the, in the time that we're operating in, which is COVID. So I just wanted to briefly share how COVID can be reported if it's a work-related uh, contracted disease. 
it can be reported at APN by our policyholders. Um, so that's just the things that are highlighted from the act. I won't pay a lot of attention to it. Uh, the key slide for me, or the summary from this uh, slide is to share that we do assist our policyholders when it comes to processing claims around COVID, but only if it can be proven that it's been, it's COVID that has contracted it at work. So what's important for me is to share how um, employers can complete the, the forms and, and register this. So we've got declaration forms, and um, we've got a FEM COVID-19 exposure form. We need certified copy to be attached of the ID and the COVID results. So these can be sent through an email or registered on our online facility. And there's uh, information or, or, or a link that can be accessed if more information is needed with regard to this. Um, and then lastly, the section that I'm about to share with you is something that's very important to us as a business. So it's what we call the FEM Education Foundation. And the reason why this is particularly important to us as a business is because the Education Foundation was built or started through our policyholders. So as our, our CEO and the board appointed individual that I played to you earlier, 750 million was contributed by our policyholders towards this initiative. So it's an initiative around educating um, people in the communities that we operate in. So it's important that we don't just take uh, from communities, but then we give a very good focus around what we give back. And for us, education is very important from a very young age right through to adults. So these are some of the partners that we have through the Education Foundation. And they cover kids from crash, so early childhood development, um, right through to adults that run businesses and schools. So school principals, for an example, uh, through Partners for Possibilities, are linked up with um, business leaders. And these business leaders monitor and, and, and really give the mentorship around running businesses. So it's something that we talk about a lot um, when we speak to potential policyholders, and it's something um, that, that, that we really value. So I'll just play a very brief video for you just to show some of the things that uh, we've, got, we've got from Smart Start, which is one of our partners. When I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be a superstar. To make buildings. Famous Ziff. A pilot. I want to fly. I want to be a businessman. We aim to create access to early learning for 1 million children every year by 2025. Smart Start, giving every child the power to succeed. So as I've said, that's just one of the organizations that we work with and, and we allow these organizations to bring to life the dreams that these kids have. And that brings me to the end of my presentation and I will take any questions that you might have.